What's up you guys, welcome back to the channel. In today's video, I'm gonna show you how to record audio and graph wave files using Python. So I've been traveling a lot for work lately and I'm not at home this week, so I don't have my multiple screens and setups to do like a real detailed line by line tutorial. But I wanted to bring you guys this cool quick project that uses recording audio and the matplotlib graphing library um, to do some really cool audio visual stuff. So I'm gonna do a slightly different format for this video where I'm gonna show the code that I already have written and explain what each section does, but I'm not actually gonna type it out line by line in real time with you guys. Let me know in the comments below if you like this format more or if you find the tutorials where we do go line by line and I explain it as I write it. Let me know what your preference is and I'll start doing more of that type of tutorial if people lean one way or another. Otherwise, I'll probably just keep a good mix on the channel. So thank you guys so much for your feedback. And without any further ado, let's start talking about the project. So to start, um, you're going to want to import the Pi Audio module, and you should be able to do this just by using um, dash m pip install Pi Audio. There's a lot of Stack Overflow and online help about how to install these modules. So if you're having any trouble with any of the ones you see here, just um, check out the internet. I'm not going to go too in depth about how to run pip because hopefully uh, by this stage of project building, you know how to import modules but you need the Pi Audio module to actually record from your computer. And then you wanna import the Wave module, which most of the time is a built-in module that comes installed with your Python install. And that's the Python module that lets you parse Wave files and process them and use them, um, which we'll need to do in this project. Then import the matplotlib.pyplot as plot. I always alias it. You don't technically have to do this, but trust me, it saves you a lot of typing later on. Um, this is the graph package that's actually going to give us the visual of our wave file when we record. And then import numpy as np. Honestly, even if you weren't doing this project in particular, this is a package I import at the beginning of almost every project because it's got so many shortcuts for math and arrays and data visualization. It's a great one to have in your projects. <clears throat> And then this second block of four rows is us setting up some specifics about our audio files. And I will touch on what each of them do real quickly, but just know you can kind of use these as a default if you don't really understand what we're looking at. Um, frames per buffer is essentially how many frames are going to be recorded per second. And you'll notice how we use that when we get down to actually recording. Um, but 3200 is super standard and we need to put it kind of in that format because when we get to the point where we open the computer's like stream and record from the uh, microphone or your computer microphone, whatever you're using, that's the format it uses. If you're peeking ahead a little bit here, you'll see there's some specific uh, parameters that we give the stream when we open Pi Audio's like microphone recording input. And so just use frames per buffer as 3200 for now if you don't want to dive too deep into why that is. Um, and then the format, uh, this is where these next two are kind of together. If you're recording in what's called mono or single channel recording, then you want your format to be that of PA int 16. If you were recording in uh, stereo, which would have two channels, you would want the PA int 32. But we're just going to record in mono um, because every microphone can handle that. Not every microphone can handle recording in stereo. <clears throat> and then for rate, uh, this is going to be 1600. That is a really standard wave recording frequency. Um, so that's what I'm going to use. You don't have to, uh, but again, I don't want to get too deep into the actual science of audio files. I just want to show you guys how to write the code. So then um, I just like to create this alias variable where I say pi audio dot pi audio um, with parentheses is equal to PA because typing this every time you want to access something from pi audio is a bit messy and this makes it a lot cleaner and neater to read your code. But so then this, this stream is actually where we open the computer and access the microphone essentially. <clears throat> so from pi audio, 
It's just PA.open. And then those variables we set up before, format, channels, rate, and frames per buffer. This looks kind of like Kivi. Um, if you've designed any graphical user interfaces in Kivi, there's a lot of parameters that you just set, you know, parameter name equal to. And if you're setting up a big project, it's smart to just use a variable in there so that you can play around with the variables up here instead of having to mess around inside your stream. So anyways, just format channels rate and frames per buffer. And then anytime you're trying to access the microphone, set input equal to true. And then uh, because I want kind of a countdown on the screen while you're recording, we're gonna just print the word start recording on screen. And now anything you say after that gets printed is in our kind of our recording. So uh, then we set up some new variables. Seconds is gonna be how long you want the recording. So for me, I just picked eight seconds because you can say full sentences in there, but it doesn't go on too long. This would be a tedious video if you guys ha just had to watch me record minutes of data. But so if you want longer recordings, you can make this a larger value. Create an empty list for your frames. And frames is actually going to be individually capturing the audio frequency of your recording device every single iteration. So when we said our rate divided by our frames per buffer, that's gonna be how many times per second it's recording. So that's quite a large number. Um, and so it, you're gonna store that all in a list that we're gonna use both for storing the wave file later and for graphing it um, at the end. And then these two, uh, second tracking and second count, these are definitely optional, but I like the idea of in the terminal, just showing how much time is left in your project, um, in your recording rather. And so what I do is I create this variable second tracking that's going to add one every single time we record a new frame. But then once we've recorded enough frames that equal one second, so remember I said that's the rate at which we're sampling divided by the number of frames per buffer. That's gonna tell you how many seconds you have um, or that's gonna tell you how many frames you have in one second. So if second tracking is equal to that value, that means we've gone one second. I reset my second tracking code and then I just add one to my counter for seconds. And then I show how much time is left by printing the total seconds minus the number of seconds that have passed. This is just a nice thing so that while you are recording, um, it's showing you you have seven seconds left, six seconds left, five seconds left. If you want to, it's not even a bad idea to say seconds afterwards so you don't have to guess about units. But then once it finishes, so this means we've gotten to the point where we've done this many, which is how many frames per second times the total number of seconds. And once we get to that point, you do stream.stopstream, stream.close, and then pi audio, which we've aliased as PA, dot terminate. And this is everything you need to shut down the recording. But then what we want to do is we want to store the information in a file. So what I do is uh, I create another alias variable that I call object or OBJ, and then uh, set it equal to wave.open. So again, the wave module is like the built-in package for parsing data, and then uh, give it a name. So this actually doesn't have to be an existing audio file. If you see right now, I do have that, but if I delete this out because I just did a recording, so I'm gonna delete it, and I'm not gonna do the safe delete. So I just got rid of it. This code is still gonna run fine because we're not doing a read function right now, we're doing a write function. So the two things you need to give this wave.open argument are the name you wanna give your wave file. And then if you're writing, this is WB for write binary. If you were reading from it, it would be RB, which is read binary. And if you're peeking ahead, we actually do that later once we read it. Um, into graph it. So uh, I do it that way so that I can show you using the wave module a couple times, but technically you do already have the data in this file. So then what you do is um, with the wave file, you're already creating a wave object by saying wave.open. So there are these built-in functions that you need to populate with those things we've already created. So set the number of channels, and this is what's gonna tell the wave file if it's uh, mono or stereo. And then set sample width is uh, just telling it the total size. And by doing that, it just needs to know the format. So it's able to uh, figure out how many frames are in it by knowing what format. So if this is a stereo um, recording, that's gonna be int 32. But if it's a mono recording, it's int 16. 
and all you have to do is just uh, set the sample width by doing pi audio dot get sample size of the format and then object dot set frame rate and then just tell it the frame rate that you were recording at um, and then the last thing you do is you say object dot write frames and then you do b uh, parenthesis parenthesis dot join and then all of the frames and so this is the list we just recorded so this is our full list of all of the data while we were recording and we just join that to this write frames object um, uh, module that's not the right word function of the uh, wave module and then just close it so this object dot close is what actually saves all of your work and now you're going to have a file so if you were to stop the program right at this block of code you're going to have an audio file over here everything after that code is now just so that we can graph it on the screen if you were to stop right there you would have everything you needed to get a recording <clears throat> So then what I do now to kind of show you the flip side of things, if you already had a recording and you wanted to graph it, then start with file equals wave.open. And the only reason I say file instead of object again is to kind of distinguish the two functions. But you could call this object again if you needed to, or you don't really have to open it back up since it already exists. But again, I'm trying to separate out the two functionalities. So we're going to open the file right after we record it and notice now it's RB because it's read binary. Now we're just getting the data out of it and set up a few things. So sample frequency is going to be file dot get frame rate. Frames is going to be get number of frames. And then the, the actual wave is going to be reading the frames and then just give it a minus one, which basically means read everything. <clears throat> and then we're going to close it because now we've moved all the information we need into a uh, into our local variables so we don't have to mess with the file anymore we have everything we need right here the total time of the recording is equal to frames divided by the sample frequency so that tells us how long it is and then again if one channel use int 16 here for data type otherwise um, if it's stereo use int 32 but we're creating an array and here's why numpy is great for this project um, we're just going to create an array and then we say from a buffer and then we give it the wave and we say what data type it was produced with. Um, and so that's all we have to do as long as you follow um, the same steps that I gave you here. That's going to give you an array of all of the data that was recorded and it knows how to graph that. <clears throat> So then the times are going to be equal to numpy again. And now this is lin space, L in space, um, and then zero up to time where the number is equal to frames. So this is saying your start time and your end time. Um, and then the total number of uh, data points to expect in that space. And so this should be logical because time is equal to the frames divided by the sample frequency, which basically means from zero to time, the frames are how many data points we have. So the rest of this is just creating the graph. So we use plot, which again is from matplotlib.pyplot. So if you didn't do an alias in the beginning, you're going to need to type that out every time. But assuming you're following along, it would be plot.figure. And then the figure size, and I just use 15 by 5 because it seems about right for an 8-second recording. You can play around with this. Um, this is just setting the parameters for the size of your screen. And then you tell it what to put on the x-axis and then what the actual data is for the y-axis. And so for us, we want time in the x-axis, and then we want the audio array in the y-axis. I just give it some labels, so y-label and x-label for the signal wave and then the times. And then the X limit is from zero to time and then give it a title and do plot dot show. And that's everything. So now if we record a new one, we wait till we get start recording. There we go. And now we're recording. So I'll take a pause and now we'll talk a little bit more. And you can see right here, you know, this doesn't really look like anything in particular because I was just talking over the video. But you can see when I said, let's take a pause and then we pretty much flatline and then we get to the end here and I'm talking again. So you can do some kind of fun things with this and you can sort of see, let's do that again. So if I take big spaces, we'll see 
some fun gaps between the words. So you can see that last one, it was much closer because I was sort of talking at a normal pace. But here I took big spaces between every word and you can see you get this kind of fun shape. So you don't have to follow along with the video any longer and watch me just record multiple things. If you wanted to um, always record with a new uh, a new file name, then you could potentially set this up to be a little more robust to like running multiple times and handling different data every time. For me, this is plenty. Um, basically what this is going to do though, every time is overwrite the previous wave file. Um, so if you were going to do multiple recordings and you want it with a new name, you either are going to have to come in here and punch something manually or just create like a, a start prompt where you get the name of the wave file as an input. So um, if you wanted to, you would just do like up here input, you know, and then get uh, enter file name, something like that. And then instead of you, you would call this like new name. <clears throat> and instead of uh, just writing to Lamaster Tech every time, you would write to new name dot wave, and you would have to do that as a formatted string. So you would do something like that. I'm not doing it that way. I did just, I guess, show you how to do the whole thing. So hopefully if you would prefer to do it that way, go ahead. Um, I will probably throw all this code in a GitHub and leave a link to it in the description below. So if you don't feel like typing out everything you saw in here, that's totally fine. Um, again, let me know if you liked this kind of format where it was just an explanation of already written code, or if you'd like to see the code written line by line, uh, with me. So I was certainly happy to take feedback and make the channel better. Um, and with that being said, if you have any ideas for future videos or things you'd like to see on the channel, be sure to let me know in the comments below because I've been getting a ton of great suggestions and I am working on a lot of those projects. So I really appreciate the support. If you've enjoyed the video, please consider leaving a like on the channel, subscribe to the channel. Um, we're just getting started and uh, we make a lot of cool projects. So thank you everybody for the support. Good luck with your projects and thanks for watching. Thanks. Bye.